<laughs> All right, moving on to the last game. Hi, oh, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm PJ Broughton. Uh, you may have seen me on YouTube as Captain Keyforge. I've got my own channel, uh, but today I'm part of the Steel City Snuffle Gators uh, Steelers team. We've got two teams because there are six of us, three in each team. We're from uh, South Yorkshire, just outside of Sheffield. Uh, we tend to play at Patriot Games, um, so please come and see us if you get the chance. Uh, and yeah, uh, obviously we've got a cap on our decks. Um, so as you can see, I've gone for Lilith here. Uh, I'll be honest, I've not played it before. Um, but the the thing that was most important to me was was two things: uh, amber uh, control, control and, and artifact, artifact control. control. You'll see in this uh, grass green lines and this poltergeist because I was um, mildly concerned about Heart of the Forest decks and Quickle Stone decks. So I wanted <laughs> one of the nine cards in the game that is capable of destroying one of your opponent's artifacts, which is why Poltergeist is in here. So this was like about the only deck I had that was around about the 60 and underneath it that had uh, an artifact kill and a way to actually get rid of some of your opponent's amber. Um, I know it's not got that much, but um, we've got a couple of Grokes in there. Uh, we've got Barn Racing in there. We've actually got Brobnar, Worlds Collide, um, Amber Control, shocker. Uh, it does exist. Um, but there's not a lot of it anywhere else particularly, but as well, you know, we, we've got a board lie, we've got an evil eye, which is um, key tax. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, it, you're never going to find an all singing, all dancing deck that's going to do everything for 60 sass. But the things I wanted it to do most of all, which was a couple of board wipes, a bit of amber control and artifact control, this does. So I'll see how we go. I haven't practiced against my opponent's deck. I've looked at my opponent's deck. I haven't got it on screen in front of me, but the thing that instantly jumped out was too much to protect. Um, so <laughs> I was like, that's, that's never a bad card to have. Um, other than that, I mean, I looked, I, I was thinking, it's it doesn't seem to have anything that's massively worrying but equally it doesn't seem to be particularly bad either it's got a, a very similar score as mine to amber control um it didn't have any artifact control but i've not particularly got any artifacts in here that are really oppressive and disgusting to play against so that's not much of a worry for him um i don't know i think it's going to come down more to um how much practice um he's had um with his deck um, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't had much with this, I've, I've not played with it, but um, yeah, if he knows his deck really well and he's got lots of reps in, he, he probably ought to edge it, because I don't think there's a lot in them. Um, it's just going to be really sort of 70% skill, 30% draw, and, and and I'll have to hope for the best. <laughs> oh, no, no, because because you're setting yourself up to, to get an absolute beat in there, so I've sort of <laughs> smack talk if I was happy I was going to win. No, <laughs> So I'm Kidman XDX. I'm from Portugal. We, my team is all for, from Portugal. We are in a crazy killing over Jean, uh, previously known as the Syndicate, but now we swapped the name and got a fancy logo like uh, TMNT. I think it's the name in English. And the deck I'm playing is. Uh, I hope my opponent doesn't notice, but it's a really kind of fast deck, generate, not fast in terms of efficiency, but in generating Ember, uh, and lacks a bit of creature control and board control, but I hope he doesn't notice, and he does let me be really quick to get two keys, and then I will try to use my Untamed to do the third one uh, with the key cheat, which is key charge. So pretty much the plan is to do two keys and then try to do the third one with my key charge. Well, I had a look and I made maybe one or two games and I think the key to win is really discard my creatures because his Ember Control is all about capturing. It's Pile of Skulls and another artifact that is he needs to fight to capture. So I think in the last key, I will have to just discard all my creatures and generate Ember from my actions. And then he will have no way to get my Ember back. So I think this is pretty much the key to this game. When Mass Mutation came out, I wasn't really, I still haven't played. So it was after Mass Mutation 
it was then we played some games in a, in our local game store and and then we have this covid pandemic and a few months we i haven't played and then i i started to play a bit more but yeah maybe let's call it a year maybe but i think i had a bit of luck in the qualification because mass mutation and being able to put the announcements where I want, it really made a difference in that deck. But yeah, I was really happy. I was not hoping to qualify and uh, I'm really happy. And we had a lot of Portuguese players in the qualifiers and it's really good for, for the community to, to keep growing. And I see a really good level of play in our national and local events. So it really is appearing in the international ones. And now I believe we have like four teams in this coast. Let me just give a shout out to Manel Silva. He doesn't play a lot, but he has the local game store, the official local game store in Portugal. And it's where we get together to play uh, Shane Bounds and events that he organizes. So uh, I want to give him a shout out. Do you mean trash talk? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do. I want to say that Probnar is the worst house in the game, so thank God he bring one. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you for organizing. And we are here for the last game of this matchup, uh, with featuring the red players. Uh, and uh, maybe now we can start with the crazy killing Aubergine side. Uh, so what's the name of the deck uh, which will be piloted from your side, Dominic? So Crazy Killing Aubergine on the red player's uh, deck, they choose Aldalot, the spirit color of uh, Verd Grove. Um, that's a pretty nice name uh, and a pretty nice deck for 60 SAS cap. Uh, we see a Sanctum which basically stuns our opponent with uh, Blinding Light and with Radiant Truth. Uh, also, uh, we could uh, do some nice uh, Poison Wave double cleansing wave combo here. Uh, we have one stood against many to uh, ready and fight with one of our creatures uh, three times. But we have only 11 creatures in this deck. And uh, I believe playing against a deck with a pile of schools and with shutter throne um i wouldn't play these creatures i would just discard them uh because i uh, aldalot have 18 ember on cards 18 bonus ember uh when we take a look at that untamed that's the um, that's the worst house i would say here um, because we have triple uh, Niffle Lapes, uh, we have uh, double Snuffle Gators, and as I said before, I wouldn't play them uh, if I would be playing against a pile of Skull Stack. Uh, and the Ski Charge, uh, that could be huge here be because every other uh, card apart from creatures in our Untamed House uh, gives us Ember. But uh, I, I'm not sure that this key charge could be so crucial here in, in, in this in this matchup, but I could be mistaken here, of course. Um, so let's get back to the best house here, I would say. Let's go to get back to Shadows. Uh, we see some uh, pretty nice steel cards like Nerve Blast, uh, like Ghostly Hand, like Finishing Blow. Uh, and this finishing blow would go off every time because we deal a lot of damage with a lot of cards from uh, from the Shadow's house, like Relentless Whispers, like Poison Wave, uh, Pawn Sacrifice, um, uh, even the Nerve Blast I mentioned before. Uh, what uh, really gives us the edge here uh, is the saddle mall a uh, skeleton key that we could use just to stop our opponent but this skeleton key probably won't be uh, used as much 
as we as we like because we have only three creatures here uh but penny dodger and shadow self and none of these creatures is premium enough to keep it on the board uh to be destroyed and uh, to uh to let our opponent capture ember using pile of skulls and shattered throne uh that's why we have some dead cards like dusk runner here mm, but uh, i believe we could still make it and this day deck uh, looks really nice uh looks like a pretty decent rush deck with uh, 21 actions that we could just play and get our 18 amber for third key uh, without playing a single creature here uh, so let's take a look at the second deck here from the SCS Steelers. And Robic, that's the deck that you'll be describing. Now, what do you see there? Yeah, so on my side, uh, there is uh, Baroness Dragon Killer, which is for me is a, 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 big, a big mystery. I, I'm not so sure what was the thought process behind uh, this uh, deck choice, but uh, let's deconstruct. Uh, on the flow, we can see that the the, the main strategy here, uh, in terms of controlling Amber, is basically pile of skulls and shattered throne. And uh, there's there's also Grok, which actually is and born raising, which is in the same vein, right? You you actually need to fight to control the Amber, need to destroy creatures to control the Amber. Also, we have the Evil Eye and a Road Grab, but it's actually small enough for you. You just go and rush me. I feel like if you stick to the strategy of not playing creatures and you have only 11 in this deck, uh, I I will be basically I will could not be able to uh, control uh, the ember. You are so so uh, so fast uh, in the ember game. And uh, from my side, I have the double heart bringer of doom, but it's a dead card because I need my creatures on the board to control yours. And most of the time, I will mm, just sit with the board. Uh, with uh, some sort of the amber of captured from your side, and uh, and then I can't play the harbinger. Um, and the untamed house is 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 okayish. We have the grasping vines for for the uh, artifact control, some sort of recursion with regrowth, but there are no s such a great targets for the regrowth to just be another creature uh, with with just a medium value. I can't see myself winning this matchup. I I would say that it must be just purely the mistake on the Aubergine side if I, I if I am able to win it, or just a great draw and I just can lo uh, load the board with the this uh, with the Brobner and and so on and just maybe reap because you and it will be faster. I don't know. Yep. So um, when you say that you are not seeing any any lines here, you are not seeing any way for you to win. Um, would you give it uh, hundred percent to zero the first time ever, or would you settle for some uh, you know lower score here? I like uh, you can quote me on that, but with perfect play. So with just uh, keeping the strategy of discarding creatures. Uh, I do believe you will outrace me every single time because blinding light, uh, radiant truth on 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 those creatures, and you are and I can't reap. And if you are able to generate at least three or four amber every turn with eighteen amber on uh, pips on card and some sort of a setup with poison waves, uh, pawn sacrifice into double cleansing wave, uh, it it's it's just uh, sometimes too much for me to handle, and. Uh, I would say with perfect play, it's 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 a hundred percent matchup. But uh, let's uh, let's give some hope to the Steelers and give it some percent. What is your opinion? We can settle between you and me. Yeah, I would go with eighty twenty maybe. Uh, what do you think about this? Eighty twenty. Yep. Let's go. Okay. So let's go and watch the game. So here we are now for the final game. Let's look at those starting hands. Huge chunks to kill, can't touch this. We can't. Ability of them to come back. I know they're busy with other stuff. But. Whew! Jesus look Christ. Look at Bamfer. Hamoni is not going to do much work, and there's only one creature among that. Uh, 
Came back to Conan with a mulligan. Probably a good choice. It was 2-2-2, two, 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 so it was not a bad choice, definitely. Um, Ragwark. Yeah. Ragwark's probably going to do a lot of work here. Ragwark is uh, the first cr creature to reach the turn takes two damage. Yeah. And look at the hands. It's not that much to creatures to actually come down. <coughs> I imagine... Uh, oh, oh, look Banfair at that shadow's hoping... hand. Imagine Banfo was hoping Kinmax had a lot more in hand there. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. But he only Plays had one creature volume. in Romania, so... Place we grow, place curiosity. Camouflage and the fittest. This just sets up Kid Max beautifully for the Nerve Blast finishing blow because Hamami has gone to free power. So Nerve Blast is going to steal one. Finishing blow is going to steal another. And that's going to swing the amber into Kid Max's favour. Went down from five to three. Hmm. <sighs> Huge swinging number there. Oh, sorry for the audit. It's been a long week. Okay. Kangafan could be very powerful here. Hopefully got to see it actually kick in. Vigor's going to heal up, get some extra Amber Kidmax to fully taking control here. Cooperative hunting. Goes for the Kangafan. Interesting choice here. Takes out the Kangafat with the Cooperative Hunting. Wants the ability to reap unpunished. Evil Eye is going to keep Kid Max off the key. This Brovna, however, is acting as chains because we haven't seen any Brovna creatures yet. It's a pile of skulls, shattered throne, very powerful cards. This the main problem is there's no creatures down to fully take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, just get the chain first. <laughs> Exhausted Spider, Harbinger, Imp Spectre, and Boris Knit Tuck. Very good. We see the boss net touch come down. We see Raiding Knights pushing up ability, take hostages, Relentless Whisper and Vigor. A very quick snap onto Relentless Whisper there. Probably a good choice. And the first key is in play. Second, first key second also key. in play. Sorry, second key is in play. I do know what's going on, I promise. Exactly so. my Fox. Shattered Throne and Pile Skulls work outside the house as well. It's just a case of you don't, they need to be set up. Interesting choice here to reap for the Harbinger Doom rather than running it into Protectrix to just blow up the board. Reap for the Spider, reap for the Inspector. So if you're going to reap anyway, maybe reap for the Inspector, uh, gain the Amber. Kill it off with the ragwalk, get a, a card from the hand. Which is take hostages, take hostages, one stood against many snuffle gator, which is just disgusting. Reaps with the protect tricks. Doesn't really. Oh, heals up. Uh, heals up the shadow self, and it can't take damage. And look at this snuffle gate is collecting six amber. Jesus. Leaves it. Leaves the harbinger alive. Goes into disc. It's going to be a reap, and it's going to be a run. Harbinger into protectrix. Blow up the bard. Get rid of the thieves' bane. Uh, Kid Max gets the blue key down. Are we going to see a dusk run on a bad penny? We are. We're going to see a dusk run on a bad penny. I can't see how else you're going to do it. Yeah. I like that. The anvil comes down. So, Bamford Bam getting very close to getting hold of this uh, third key. Both uh, equal amber. Drops the shattered throne. Plays Barmies, which has no effect. Plays the pile of skulls. 
this is interesting because Paul Sacrifice didn't do anything here. Bigger heal by Penny. Bigger heal by Penny. Play the Nip Lake, which means you're going to get some value from Harmonia here. But you kind of want to get rid of that bad penny. It's got the dust going on it. Play Place for bank, no fighting, which means Nifflet can't get rid of the Harmonia. But we have got Pawn Sacrifice in hand. However, it has also got the option of going Potion of Vulnerability, Clear Mind, Gatekeeper, Raiding Knight. Still gets a six, but it's going to be a Reaper of Steel. Gets five. Kills by Penny off with the uh, Ragnarok. Plays by Penny. Pawn sacrifice by Penny. Get rid of Harmonia. It's not the strongest play. Sort of more gets rid of Poltergeist, Skeleton Key to capture onto Tanta Dylan. Not finished for you. Gets you to seven. Has got the gatekeeper in hand, which should counter that, but that's that takes Kid Max off check. If you pull to guys, pull to guys the subtle mall, so that does give Kid Max the win. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of good. If you if the skeleton key would have gone for extra turn, but Kid Max kind of had that in the bag, but so that's a free zero two crazy killing aubergine. Who I believe are also keeping their decks over. Uh, do you want to switch screens? Yeah, keep on. Uh, good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah.